Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's do a video for the folks who are new to leather craft. Let's make a simple belt, but let's add in the mystery braid. What's well, a no frills belt, but that alone makes that absolutely beautiful and it's easy to do. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there, I'm gonna take you straight to the website. Also, if you wanna know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, go over some basics. We're gonna keep this belt simple, but it's gonna be beautiful and extremely durable. This will last for years. We're gonna strap our own leather. Now, the reason I bring that up is this. If you're new to leather, or you simply wanna make your own belt, we've got what's called a belt blank, and we have got some beautiful leathers. Basically, we're just gonna build our own belt, and we're gonna do it for about a third of what that belt would cost retail. So we need a blank. We've got matching keepers for every leather. Let's pick our own buckle. Let's make this ours. And I would suggest a pack of Chicago screws. It's basically a threaded rivet. But now all we need is a screwdriver to knock our belt together. There is one more thing we need if we don't have one, a revolving punch. Our blanks are not gonna come with our size holes, but once we get a revolving punch, sky's the limit decorating our own belts. Now the leather, we're gonna use a, a pre-dyed veg tan. Look at that. That's simply with a leather balm top coat. So easy to get that level of cleanliness. Gorgeous piece of leather. On our pattern, we're not gonna go into great detail here. This is a shorty. We've got this in every belt video. But basically, I've got a red line between my, my second hole and a red line across my oblong. Nine and a half inches is this distance combined with this distance. So I'm going to take my waist size, 35, at nine and a half inches, 44 and a half inches. That's how long my blank needs to be. You'll see the other side of how this works. Super easy to do. All right, so let's step over to our main table, start cutting some leather. This is a big side of leather, and I'm never going to get this in the camera shot. Doesn't matter. We don't need to. So this is our holster leather, pre-dyed veg tan. That is beautiful. Now this comes in three ways. We're going with the eight to nine ounce, standard belt weight. But also this is our chestnut color. We've seen what this looks like when we add a top coat. Now to save a little time, I've cut a straight edge in this. We're gonna use our wooden strap cutter. We've gotta have a good straight edge in this. Now if you don't have a strap cutter, what I would typically do is measure out my length and we'll look at that shortly but then I'll drop in my two parallel lines for our mystery braid while it's still on the hot. It's a lot easier to do that, but we're gonna go a different route, very easy to do. So let's set our wooden strap cutter one and a half inches, and I'm gonna strap off a one and a half inch strap. There we go, we've got our strap cut. Now we need 44 and a half inches. I'm a 35 inch waist. So let's add nine and a half to that. 44 and a half. So there we go. Okay. Our strap is cut. Now again, to save us a little time, we're going to make our own keeper. And this is a cool trick because this is a natural veg tan. So we can wet form this. So right here, I've got a piece. It's about a half inch wide, but it's also our eight to nine ounce. Simply too thick to make a good keeper. So let's take our skiver. Now I've cut a much longer than a piece than I need. I'm going to need about, I think, four and three quarter inches, but we'll measure that. So let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from my flesh side or my sky side. I'm going to dig in and I'm going to do my best to keep that even and parallel to my cutting surface. And there we go. We've got a good keeper. So let's trim this down to five inches and we'll measure this again here shortly. Okay, we've got our two pieces. Let's step over to our punch table, drop a rivet in our keeper. The reason I say it's about four and three quarter inches is this. Skiving is a very imperfect technique. So this can be a little bit larger or a little bit thinner. That's actually going to affect the size of the keeper. So let's make it easy. What I'm gonna do is on this end, I'm gonna drop in a mark with my awl. Let's circle this around our belt. There we go. Let's leave that a little bit open. Let's leave a little room there and let's make another mark 
There we go, right on top of the first. So let's trim this off and let's just measure it. So actually about four and a half inches, good. With our revolving punch, let's punch a small hole on both ends. Good. Now we've got our four piece rivet and snap setter set. This is simply the anvil and the rivet setter. We're going to use our antique copper small or the quarter inch double cap rivet. Let's take our keeper and we'll lay that down. Let's bring one end around, drop that on our rivet. There we go. Let's do the same on the other side. Now, one thing I love about the double caps is we can snap the cap on and it's not going to pop off. That's very frustrating. But let's go ahead and set that right where it is. Good. We've got a keeper. Let's jump over to our pattern table and wet form this. The only reason we can do this is we're going with a veg tan, a dyed veg tan or a natural veg tan will do the same. So let's drop that in our water, get that good and wet, and it's going to take a second with the holster leather. But when it dries, it's going to be exactly the same color it was when we started. Okay, good. It's nice and dark. Now right here, I've got blanks. These are literally for keepers. Now if you don't have wood, if you're not a woodworker, leather will almost work just as well. So right here, one and a half inch, let's work this on. That's a little tight. That's exactly what we want. So let's go right there. Now let's just press in on our corners. Really, we're just trying to make this good and square. Yeah, we worked that a little bit. That's going to look very good, very finished, very professional. Nice. So let's let that dry on the form. We're going to jump back over. Let's mark and punch our belt. If my description of our pattern was a little confusing, we're going to clear that up right now. You'll see exactly how this works. So my blank, 44 and one half inches. What I would typically do, let's butt to one end and I'm going to mark for my size holes. We'll butt to the other end and mark for our rivet holes around our buckle. That red line, that's right where our bend back is. Well, before we mark, let's see if this actually works. So let's butt to this end. There we go. And let's put our red line right on zero. Good, let's butt to this end. There we are, 35 on the nose. This belt's gonna fit perfectly, and how easy is that? Okay, so let's go ahead and mark our holes. And our blank is marked. Let's jump over to our punch table, punch our oblong, round end, and English point. For our size holes, I want to go with a little larger hole. So with our revolving punch, let's go with a five millimeter tube. There we go. Okay. On this end, Let's jump down to a three millimeter tube because we're going to secure our buckle with rivets. So therefore, let's go down to about a three millimeter hole. I want that hole a little bit snug on that rivet. That's going to give me my best bite and most durability. Good, we've got those. So on this end, we don't necessarily need to add a round in punch. We may not have one. We could just clip the sides or the corners, or we could just leave it where it is. But since we've got the tool, let's use it. Good, very professional. Now on this end, let's go with a one and a half inch English point. There we go, okay, looks good. Last punch, we're gonna go with an oblong. Now the rule of thumb here, one and a half inch belt, one and a half inch oblong. So let's do our best to land this right between our holes. There we go, good looking oblong. Okay, let's jump back to our main table. Another point I made earlier that may be confusing, and I fear I'm seeing a pattern here, 
is that we're going to have to make two parallel slits down the middle of our belt for our braid. We're going to use a lace cutter. Makes it very easy. We'll talk about that. But the point was, is that let's make our slits before we separate the strap from the main hide. Because we might, if we really work at it, we could get a parallel line there. Well, not likely. Secondly, we could always pin our strap between two straight edges, come back in with another. That doesn't guarantee us a good cut at all. So the point, again, if we're going to cut our strap, let's cut our slits before we separate from the main hide. Okay, so we're going to go with a leather balm. We'll cut our strips here very shortly. It's just easier to add our top coat before we slit our leather. So I've got two rags here. I'm going to use a wet rag to apply, and I'm going to use a dry rag to buff. So let's go easy on this. And I love the fleece rags because they'll hold a lot of leather balm. There we go. Now, the one thing, let's just apply this easily. We don't want streaking or bubbles. Good. Now let's let that dry for a little bit. Jump over to our keeper. Let's add our leather balm while it's still on the form. So much easier to do. Okay, let's let that dry. In fact, I want to get some of that, those, the bubbles and the streaking. We want to try to keep that to a minimum. There we go. Okay, let's let that dry. Now let's jump over to our rag, our, our dry rag. Let's start to buff. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so we can definitely see a difference between the two. And how easy is that? All right, so let's buff the balance of this. Well, you know what? Right there alone, that is a beautiful belt. Okay, it's buff right here. And it's just so much easier to apply and to buff the leather bump while that's still on our form. Very nice, very square, professional keeper. So let's take our belt and our lace cutter, jump over to our pattern table. This is our tabletop lace cutter. We've got a great video on this, so I'm not going to go into all the details, but this is one helpful tool in our shop because we can cut our own lace. Now, lace can be expensive, and we can't always find the lace to match our project. Let's cut our own. Very cost effective. So here's how this works, just the high points. These plates will separate from the main body, and we can drop a knife blade in between each of these plates. So therefore, we pull a piece of leather through here, we get eighth inch lace. We could go every other or every two plates, we've got quarter inch lace. So basically that's how it works. This is simply a guide that will hold the leather down on the knife blades. Well, I don't typically use this because I want to have more control. So let's slip our belt in. Now, big point, this machine is not necessarily made for the heavier leathers. So I need to keep good sharp blades in this. But let's start right here is our last rivet hole. So let's pull down onto the blades. Let's get a little distance here. Yeah, look at that. Two perfectly parallel uh, slits, and how easy is that? And let's come down to about an inch from our last hole, about right there. That looks good. Again, how easy is that? I'm going to knock a nail into our pattern table. Let's braid this. The one thing we're looking for in a mystery braid is a tight braid. Well, we've got to have room at the other end to unfurl this, so that can be a little tough to do. Now we're going with a natural veg tan. We could wet this, get a very tight braid in it. Well, we're going to ding our edges, but the bigger problem, trying to get a top coat on a braided belt, that is tough to do. Creates a big mess. So let's start right here with our mystery braid. We're going to make four turns, unfurl, two turns, and we've got a set. You'll see what I'm talking about, and we've seen this before. So right over the center, that becomes our center. That's turn one. Left over the center, that becomes center. Turn two, three, four. Now on this end, notice how I've got these two straps. I'm going to take the end, there we go, and I'm going to circle through those two straps. There we go. Now, we've still got a little bit of a mess down here. Let's do this. Turn five, turn six. Now, when we spread this, notice that end, it wants to fall through. There we go. So, there we are. We've got one full set. So, I'm going to see how many sets I can get in this. Now, I'm down here at my end. I think I can get one more set in here. 
Now we're going to come back. We're going to flip this around and make this a little bit more even. But as we wear this belt, it's really going to soften up and this is become, going to become a very clean braid. So down here at the bottom, there's four. Let's take our tab, run that back between the left and the center, number five and number six. And let's bring that back through. That's about as many, as many sets as I can get. So let's flip this around on our nail. Yeah, good tip there would be to make a hole big enough for our nail. Now we're going to braid it coming backwards, but we don't have to unfurl or untangle. The braid's already there. But let's just loosen the braid up a little bit, take up some distance simply to make the braid look a little more consistent. Okay, well that's not bad, but we've got one more step. Let's step over to our main table. I'm going to run my belt across my quartz. Now that's got a beveled edge, so it's not going to tear up the belt. But what we're going to do is get this a little bit softer. We're going to work on those fibers a little bit, but we're also going to get that braid set. There we go. We're starting to get there. Let's go across this one more time. Okay, so it looks relatively consistent. Starting to feel a little bit softer. One more step. Let's knock in our buckle and our keeper. And we're done. Just after running our belt across our marble, that's starting to soften up. This is going to be a comfortable, durable belt, and it's beautiful. So for our belt, let's go with a good, heavy quality buckle, antique copper. That's going to look nice. And in fact, it's a roller buckle. The original purpose of the roller was simply to aid a strap or belt moving through the buckle. On our keeper, that looks good, nice and square. Let's slide this on because I have forgotten this so many times. Let's drop that right there. Let's come in with our buckle. Now, on our rivets, we're going to go with a double cap rivet, antique copper to match our buckle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, there we go, I'm going to set my buckle off of our marble. That way, that curl has room to go around the buckle and we can get a good flat set. There we go. That looks good. Let's jump back to our main table. Typically, when we braid something, it's going to chew up a little bit of distance. Well, in this situation, we haven't braided this very heavily, but let's check this nonetheless. So I'm going to put my bend back right at the end. Let's see, 35. I'm at about 3 eighths of an inch short of my 35. So we did lose a little bit of distance. Now, all told there, the first time I wear this, I'm going to make up that 3 eighths of an inch. This is going to stretch a little bit. But also, right down here, you'll notice I always measure from my bend back and not the end of my buckle. Well, two reasons. First off, buckles can vary. Some are larger, some are smaller. But all told, now we have a little room for error if we need it. But all told, I got to say, we have created one beautiful belt. A simple project that's beautiful, comfortable, durable, useful, fun to make. What else could we possibly ask for in a project? Well, there's one more thing we could ask for. A perfect fit every time, and we've got it. I hope every mystery braid belt you make is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.